This family, we are downtown the Park Independence Square family. <laughs> I like that. This is an old buddy looking dog, great. I literally remember being here, just right in this area. Uh, the last time I was really here, which is in 2005, 2006. And family. You'll see certain things in the city, but what you don't want to do is stay in the city the whole time. Oh yes, tomorrow we do more in detail. Yeah, yeah. we're family we're passing through some of the same place just so we can go shopping. Gonna stop, shop, and walk around, go through the market. I'm gonna show you things today. Anyway. So, 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 I mean, family tomorrow is a big day. Yeah, it is a big day. More of a city tour, but try to get things. Um, where the common people go. So, see, you experience the way of going. You remember that we saw you yesterday. Yeah, some of the same things we're gonna see, uh, but uh, you know we're gonna. Have time to walk, then walk through, take pictures. Well, hopefully somebody got a nice photo of this. Yeah, I hope it did. There was a train station, as I have it tomorrow. And this is the um, Black Civilization Museum. In front. This is that brown building. This is the Black Civilization Museum? Why am I, why am I confused about, why am I thinking that there's a museum by the monuments? By the, that monument? Yes. Oh, no, by the um, African Renaissance monument. Why am I thinking there's a museum in there? <laughs> um, but this is it. But that's the Black Civilization Black Museum. Black Civilization Museum. So even that museum we've never been to. That's why I tell people when you come with your friends to places you're not gonna see much. Yes, sir. And when it, you know, sometimes you know you go out, you get up late, and you yeah. know, you just for me traveling the most important thing is writing and organize itinerary to cover all of your basics. Uh -huh. And that's what uh, we have done. And I'm gonna touch it up and make an even better itinerary for next year. Yes, uh, I see. So I'm filling everything out. But that's perfect, guy. Uh, everything seems to be very close. Yeah. Uh, the Black Civilization Museum, that is it right there. So family, it's things like that we have on itinerary. You know, because the history and the culture is in the museums. Yes, man. We have a lot of things over there. I mean, about black civilization. I mean, um, black in the world. As, uh, black, uh, Africa is the cradle of humanity. And uh, um, the influence of black civilization in, ma in sciences, mathematics, uh, uh, and um, physics. And you have. Um, the, 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 uh, the line of people that were that were very very important like Martin Luther King, Chef and all those guys you never win from them. The part they call the the, um, the mass dialogue where you have the mass where African mass and mass from people out of the world. Uh, so are you are you able to record in the museums? Because in Togo and Benin, um, yeah. where we can't record in the museum. I think we can. You can? I'm, I'm gonna ask them. I'm gonna ask them. I went there the day before you came. I went there. I know that you have a English speaking to. Yeah, so, uh, I told them that and they said, okay, you can have somebody <laughs> talking and you pass them. Okay. Yeah, I just believe that here, uh, some people are not going to make it to the country, so I have family and other people, you know, we just share our experience and I want them to get like the, the, the history, so when we go to museums, um, you know, we just take our time and record everything and then you go back and then you watch it on your big TV, on YouTube or wherever, and just, you, you can go back and learn so much more. There's only so much you can capture when you're going somewhere for eight to ten days and you're moving. So the good thing about it, when you record everything, you can go back and learn from it and things like that. Yes, yeah. And, and you know, um, you have so much things at the same time, you don't have time to catch anything. 
So this, whoa, 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 whoa. So, but, and later on, they have time to learn, to read, take your time, and experience a lot of things. So there is, there is family. And as you can see, family, still no dirt roads. <laughs> no, it's crazy because guess, some people believe that you just come to Africa and there's dirt roads everywhere well, and there's no civilization. I was like, you guys have been, you, you, your mindset must be stuck in the colonial period. <laughs> you know, that's, that, uh, that's the way they do things. You know, uh, even in Senegal, we have, we, uh, because tourism is based with our relationship with France. So, well, most of our tourists have come from France. But we have high season, tourist season and low tourist season. Their tourist season means when uh, during summer, when in France is open to its visitors, they have sun and everything. So, and they say we have the rain and we have mosquitoes, we have malaria, by the period. That's not true because we have three months of rainy season. During those three months, we never have 30 days of rain. Three months of rainy season. What months are those? In the summer uh, months? July. August, September. And it does the end, end all day long. And if it rains, it might rain just for an hour or two, and that's it, and the sun comes back. You know, it's the same, it's the, it's the same uh, in, uh, in, in Ghana. Yeah. That's the, that's the uh, rainy season. Yeah. Mainly July, oh, August, yeah. September. And maybe a little bit, a month before that, and also a month after, depends on the, the time. Uh, so when is the low, uh, when is the low and the high peak uh, tourist season? January. Uh, uh, it's from uh, November, December, January, February. And that's the high peak? Uh, uh, yeah. After the rainy season? Yes, right? after the rainy season. So right now we're in the, the, the low peak tourist season. Oh, there's the high peak tourist season. There's the high tourist season, but because of COVID-19, but it's kind of, that's why people were telling us uh, at the island. It's a long time. It's the first group we saw since March. You talking about us? Yeah. Why is everybody telling us that? We go to we went to Tanzania, I uh, went to Ghana, and people were like yo, you guys are the first group we've seen. It was like, where did I see your folks at? <laughs> because, because people went to the past because of COVID nineteen, nobody came. Even, you remember? I, I told you that. Um, where Alan was closed. Oh, yes, the, yeah, yeah. the hotels were closed. Nothing was open because of COVID-19. And I'm telling you, we haven't had yet 1,500 yes wow. from COVID. So uh, we have 1,000 yes for a full year from March 2020 to March 2021. We just had 1,040 something yes wow. out of COVID. So, where we study? Oh, that's a real okay. uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we are heading to Pink Lake. Yay. You know, uh, Pink Lake is um, called La Caremba. Uh, Dakar was an island. Thousands and thousands of years ago, Dakar was an island. And when the um, the, 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 sea, the sea went away, the ocean went away, it left several lakes. Some of them with uh, portable water, some others uh, salty. And after a long period of drought, from 1970 uh, to 1985, we had a long period of uh, drought. And the underground water got very low, we had a lot of evaporation, and uh, that pink lake turned, that was salty, turned so salty we have 800 grams of salt per liter. Very, very salty. So salty that you can't swim on it because it floats. That's it. And, uh, and in, in that salty water, there's some uh, microorganisms that are pinkish. And they love the sun, so when it's uh, like this sunny and windy, they, all of them come uh, to the um, to the surface of the, of the of the lake, and it turns definitely nicely pink. That's why we call it pink lake. There's no life on it, too salty, no fish, no nothing, and. Have, uh, and the only activity over there is uh, 
people are fishing uh, salt, a lot of salt. We export salt throughout Africa, uh, from Dakar to Benin, Nigeria, and to Europe. They use it in Europe to melt the, um, the snow. To melt the snow? Yes, just to melt the snow. But it's um, edible salt. Okay, yeah, we use it. We, we produce a lot of salt, more than 900,000 tons of salt per year. Okay, once we get there, we're gonna get on uh, four by fours to uh, drive around the lake. So see the lake, get close to it, um, and then go to a village. That's a Fulani village that we're gonna visit. Uh, okay, this uh, in that village they have a kind of cooperative where they sell. Uh, souvenirs, wood carvings, leather goods, so you can buy things if you want. Get your shopping on, hey! <laughs> and then, after that, we're gonna continue, go by the sea, by the ocean, see the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Very nice sandy beach it is. We spend 15 minutes on uh, on the beach, and then go, go to the restaurant, for those who want to have lunch. Man, it sounds like an ex exciting schedule. Yeah, thank you. And I'm sure the price you're gonna get is better than if you were in down downtown the car, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, at least, at least, that, that was, that was, that was, that was,